Hi, this is Ed Lieberman, and this demo on creating user roles is from my Small Business Server 2011 training course. So back here on our SBS console, we're still looking at our users. Okay, now we still want to be on this section here called Users and Groups, but you'll notice that we have some tabs here. We're on the Users tab. We want to now move over to the User Roles tab. And this is where we can see all of our user roles. Again, we have the three built-in user roles, which are the standard user, which what does it say here? Has access to shared folders, printers, faxes, email, remote web access, Microsoft SharePoint Foundation, and the internet. We have the network administrator, which has unrestricted system access. And then we have our standard user with administrative links. And this is the one where it has standard user permissions and can also view the administration links from remote web access. Let me go ahead and put my cursor back on there so we can read it all. And the desktop gadget links. Okay, so we have kind of our standard user, our middle of the road standard user, but with a little bit slightly better privileges, and then our full-blown unrestricted network administrator. So what can we do here? Well, we can add a new user role. This is we want to just start fresh. So I'm going to add a new user role, give the role a name. So why don't we say sales user role, okay, just to give it a name. We could give it a description, which would just simply be, this is a template for our sales users. We can base the defaults on an existing user role, okay? So we could base it off of one of our existing roles. So we'll start with standard user, because I would say that our sales users are pretty much like a standard user, but we're going to then tweak things from there. Here it says the user role appears as an option in the add new user account wizard and the add multiple accounts wizard. So we want this role to appear as part of the initial, like when we first create accounts, we want to see as part of that wizard, yes. And if we want, we could say that this role is the default in those wizards. And for that, I'm gonna say no. I, I like that the standard user is still the default role. But maybe you have your own customized standard user role that you want as your default, and you don't wanna modify the built-ins. That's, that's always a good practice, okay? One of, one of the best practices that are not listed in the best practices that I have in this lesson, but it's a Microsoft best practice, they've always recommended this over the years, is that the stuff that's built in, you leave it alone. If you want to duplicate it and make something similar to it, great, but by leaving the defaults alone, it allows you to quickly and easily get back to them if you ever realize the need to do so. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and create this role. Click Next. Now here... It talks about the user role permissions or group membership is really what it is. Now we haven't talked about groups yet, but if we wanted to go ahead and say that this particular role or any user who is part of this role is going to have specific groups that it's a member of, well, then we could go ahead and do that here. Now we haven't created any additional groups, so there's nothing for me to add here. Uh, but I'll tell you what, when we do add groups in just a little bit, we'll come back to this role and we'll add the group membership in. So I'll click next. Now I can choose the email settings. Do I want to have a quota? You know, maybe our sales users, they get quite a bit of email. So instead of only two gig, maybe we're going to go ahead and say that they get double that. They get four gig. And do our sales users need access to Outlook Web Access? Sure. But we can decide right now whether they do or don't by a simple check of the box. Go ahead and click next. How about remote access? We're gonna say that our sales users need remote web access and VPN access. Click next. Their shared folder where they store stuff. How much space do they need there? Well, let's say that our sales users, they, they do need uh, a big quota for their email, but we're gonna say that they don't need a very big quota when it comes to how much information they can put out in their individual user shared folder. So we're going to lower that to one gig. 
And we'll even go ahead and enable folder redirection to the server. We won't worry about a quota for it. We're just going to enable folder redirection. Again, something we will explain later in another lesson, but just want to show you the settings right here. Let's add the role. It goes through, it creates the role. From there, we can go ahead and add a new user account or add multiple user accounts. And again, this is just going to take us into those wizards, meaning we're not specifically saying, oh, let's add accounts in this role. It's just taking us right into the wizard. I mean, if I click add new user account, okay, you'll notice the default was still standard user. They're just trying to say that now the sales user role does exist. Okay, so if we were to go ahead and create another user here, so we're going to go ahead and say Aileen Ferris. And we're going to say that Aileen is part of the sales user role. Need to give a password to Aileen. Add user account. Now, it might not be that uncommon that the very first thing you do is set up your roles. As a matter of fact, I'm presenting these to you in what could be the reverse order of how you would create things in a production environment. You may actually choose to create your groups first. And we haven't talked about groups, but we will in a minute. But you may create your groups first. Then go ahead and create your roles, because of course part of those roles is including what groups the user with that role might be a part of. And then you would jump in and create user accounts and I would probably click on the link for multiple user accounts. I'd probably click on this link right here, add multiple user accounts now that I've got a role to put them into. Okay, so just a thought. There is no one right way or wrong way to do this. Okay, you don't have to do it in a certain order, but just a suggestion of how it might be done. So I'm gonna go ahead and click finish. I just want to show you that we have the role here, but if I go over here to users and I refresh this view, I now have Aileen Ferris, and Aileen is part of the sales user role. And what that means is if I go into the properties for Aileen, remote access, she has access to both remote web and the VPN, whereas the other users just had remote web. Email quota is four gig, still no computers. When it comes to folders, the shared folder quota is down to one and folder redirection is enabled. Groups, we didn't do anything with that. And websites, we didn't do anything with that other than we gave access to Outlook Web Access, which of course was already checked for everybody else anyway. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training, please visit www.trainsignal.com.